Welcome to another movie plot and enjoy the memories. It begins after dark with two lawyers talking about their client while boarding an elevator. Pam has opposing views with her partner Barry about their serial killer client, when the lights start to flicker and the elevator suddenly stops. Barry decides to check the maintenance hatch but a worker's corpse falls out and a swarm of bats maul him as Pam watches in a panic. They then focus her while biting through the elevator wires sending it plummeting down, and as one forces its way into her mouth she dies on impact with the ground level. It turns out to just be a film being watched by the professional thief Buck while hanging out with his girlfriend. A reporter comes on TV talking about an escaped criminal and questioning Sheriff Otis who's determined to hunt him down. Sometime later Otis shows up at Buck's house with a deputy and invites himself inside. He questions Buck on the whereabouts of his friend but he tells Otis that him and his girl Marcy are trying to go straight. As the officers leave Buck gets a call and pretends that it's his mother on the other end, but as they exit it's revealed to be the criminal they're looking for as Buck's mom's dead. Luther Heggs wants to get the old gang back together to perform a heist so Buck travels around town and starts rounding up the old team. He begins with Niles who's the team's safe cracker and only works for 100 grand which Buck says they'll pay him tenfold. Next he visits Jesus for the numbers who's busy juicing up his dog for an upcoming fight but is willing to join for 600k. The final member's a young night guard named Ray Bob who Bucky tells to bring his 44 and be ready at high noon. The next day Buck and Jesus pick up the clown from his ranch and Ray from his house where he's dressed in his fishing gear to throw off his girlfriend's suspicion. They travel down to Mexico and book a room for the night at the Coyote Motel to wait for Luther. While there a beautiful woman named Lupe shows an attraction to Jesus but he's warned not to go running off by the boys. The gang wait in the hotel room watching adult movies, while Jesus begins telling a story about a guy who found his wife in the middle of filming. He shot the director, the actor, the cameraman and even the donut boy before we return to the motel after the irrelevant story. Now drunk and with some built-up frustration, Jesus goes down to Lupe's room to blow off some steam. Meanwhile Luther crosses the border to Mexico but hits a bat resulting in his car breaking down. When he goes to check it out he's forced to shoot the grotesque creature before walking to the nearest location. It's a bar called the Titty Twister in which the women dance from dusk till dawn and Luther says is his kind of place. After nearly being squished by a falling disco ball when he enters, Luther approaches Razor Eddie at the bar to share a bottle and asks to use his phone. At the mention of hitting a bat with his car, Eddie offers to give Luther a lift to the Coyote Motel while the team are alerted to his short delay. Instead of going to the motel Eddie returns to Luther's vehicle and wanders into the darkness calling his friend's name. He walks out carrying his friend Victor who pulls out the bullet Luther shot him with from his chest and collapses. The vampire Eddie then goes at Luther but he empties a full mag into him before reloading and nearly being swiped by a passing car. He loses sight of Eddie who turns into a bat and begins chasing him down the road. Luther empties his final magazine into the sky managing to hit and wound the vampire bat, but he's now completely out of bullets. When attempting to flee in Eddie's truck Victor leaps through the window and after a frantic struggle, bites into Luther's neck. Back at the motel a worn out Lupe leaves Jesus asleep while she grabs a shower. A lone bat flies to the motel and in through the bathroom window to attack Lupe mid-shower. It takes about 30 seconds of biting before it finally kills her, and Jesus wakes up to find a blood puddle seeping from underneath the bathroom door. He goes to investigate, but is greeted by Luther who tries to hide the blood-soaked bathroom. He attacks Jesus and throws him around the motel room, but Jesus uses the cross on a Bible to flee into the bathroom and locks it. Lupe resurrects behind him in the bathtub as a beastly vampire and leaps on Jesus. But he fights back shattering a mirror with her head then uses shards of it to slice her head off. He leaps out of the window to escape but Luther's waiting for him and kills Jesus with a bite to the neck. The motel clerk goes to investigate and sees the vampire causing her to run back to the office and call the police. Before she completes it Luther cuts her off, but the clerk puts up a better fight than even Jesus did until getting killed with the blades of her pedestal fan. Soon after the boys finish their movie they get a fright at the arrival of Jesus and Luther, who behave normally and begin planning a bank robbery which takes them all by surprise as Luther says they're doing it tonight. They cover the windows of the car with dark tint to prevent sunlight from entering in the morning and drive to a nearby town. Once there Bucky voices his concern about their lack of planning, but Luther says not to worry and enters the building as a bat through the vents. He kills the security guard on duty and lets the others inside who become concerned for Luther's sudden lack of empathy. Niles proceeds to the vault where he begins cracking it open but the lock resembles the shape of a cross causing Luther to cover it with his coat. During the drilling he gets tempted to bite Niles' neck but resists until the job's done, but in Niles' frustration of him breathing down his neck he exposes the vault handle making Luther transform and bite Niles. When Buck gets nervous he tries to inform them to escape, but Niles is now a vampire and refuses to leave. 
Ray joins Buck in trying to flee while Jesus remains in the bank with his kind, but the police have already arrived and the two mortals are forced back inside. The bank's surrounded by SWAT teams led by the chief of police who waits on further assistance from Otis. He's back at the Coyote Motel inspecting the crime scene in the bathroom where Lupe's head floats in the tub. When Otis arrives at the bank he calls the phone inside and asks Buck to speak to the guard, so he has Jesus pretend to be the guard and tell Otis in Spanish that he's fine. Assuming that they have a live hostage, Otis tells SWAT not to move inside and instead take position on the bank roof. Jesus rips the phone out of the wall to end any further negotiations as Luther and Niles unlock the vault. They begin to fill the bags with money when the SWAT team on the roof throw tear gas down the vents into the bank. Luther turns into his bat form to fly up top and kills everyone, before flying across the street and killing their sniper by running him through with his own rifle. Buck and Ray begin conspiring to make radical moves against the other three but Jesus keeps a close eye on them. Niles calls Ray into the vault to help him fill the bags before Luther returns and begins assisting them. In the guards room Buck takes a lighter from the desk to light his smoke and notices that Jesus has no reflection. When Luther enters telling the two to help load the money into the bags, Buck holds the team at gunpoint and tells Ray to join him in escaping. He's already been turned into a vampire and they all try to jump Buck at the same time but he manages to shoot his way out. He uses a broken mop in the shape of a cross to hold his friends back while the police's smoke grenades begin to make it hard to see. After a few close calls Buck manages to leap out the front doors only to be arrested and handcuffed by Otis. He tries to warn the sheriff about the vampire threat but Otis sends in a team of SWAT to clear out the bank. The group of vampires instantly slaughter the whole team and throw their heads out as warnings to stay back. When the sun rises Buck tries to tell them that now is the time to strike, but suddenly an eclipse takes place and the sun completely disappears again. Niles Roy Luther and Jesus all leave the bank and open fire on the officers, destroying their entire barricade and tanking any bullets fired back. Once the police have been dispatched only Buck Otis and his deputy McGraw are left alive. The officers appear to abandon Buck in the back of a police car, until Luther rips the door off and Otis blows him away from the other side. The three escape while the vampires go on to start slaughtering the rest of the townspeople. When the three survivors confront them, they use their weapons in the shape of crosses to hold the vampires back. But one of the dead female officers reanimates and attacks Buck from behind. A fight breaks out as McGraw's crucifix protects his neck, but he's stabbed in the back by Jesus and killed. The traitorous vampire then attempts to steal the money from his own kind before being caught by Luther and thrown back into the fight. Buck throws his attacker onto a pipe turning her into a pile of goo, then gets attacked by Jesus who does the same when he kicks him onto the bull's horns on the front of the car. During his fight Otis uses the cross on an ambulance to keep away Niles while he slays him with a stick. He then gets attacked by Luther but he's held back by a crucifix made by their two weapons crossing. When Otis is about to destroy him, Ray saves his friend and they attempt to flee on wheels, but Luther staked through the heart and turned into goo by Buck who was hiding in the back seat. Ray's the final vampire alive and is about to kill Bucky when he throws him through a storefront window, but he forgets about the eclipse and when the sun returns he fails to make it inside a building. He's killed in the shadows by the reflection from Buck's sunglasses, while the still living Otis is shown reflecting back in the lens as he's still human. The last two survivors wonder why the vampires wanted money anyway and just guess for the same reasons as anyone. The now friendly Otis gives Buck a head start to escape arriving officers, despite being in no condition to catch him himself anyway. And the movie ends.